Hey everyone, this is Nettie, and I'm super excited to share this book discussion that I had on I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter by Erika L. Sanchez. Before we jump into the group discussion, I do want to give you a quick summary because all of the themes and topics that we just jumped into all refer back to the storyline. I'm Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter is one of those quick, easy reads that you want to keep reading to find out what happens. I started it one day and then I took the day off the next day because I wanted to finish. Uh, I wanted to know what happened. So since the beginning, we are introduced to Julia Reyes. She is a protagonist. Now, Julia Reyes is a daughter of Mexican immigrants. She lives in Chicago and her older sister just died. She got ran over by a bus. So she starts out by introducing a little bit about her sister. Her sister is the oldest and she was the perfect daughter for her parents. She stayed at home after high school. She went to a community college. She was working. She had no social life where Julia, she couldn't wait to graduate high school because she wanted to go far away for college. And her parents didn't understand that. And she didn't understand her parents or most of her family. So it definitely is a coming of age book, but it touches on so many important themes. It touches on death. It touches on shame, secrecy, family relationships, immigrant families. Julia is trying to learn how to grieve for her sister that she didn't really know. One night, Julia went into Olga's room and she found a hotel key and a thong, laundry. So she became curious to want to know more about her sister and what her sister was hiding. Obviously, she had a lover. So she wanted to find out if, you know, who this boyfriend or girlfriend was. So that's kind of what the story is about. It takes us through her, her journey and, and trying to discover who her sister, what secret her sister had. Because according to everybody, the sister, she would always be compared to her sister. Like, why couldn't you be like your sister? Why can't you be like your sister? And... Her parents were, she didn't have any freedom to do anything. And now that her sister passed, they were even stricter. She had a quinceanera. Her parents threw her quinceanera and she did not want one. Um, she had to sneak out to go see her boyfriend. She had to make up lies in order to go see him and hang out. Even if she just wanted to go to the bookstore, she had to make up lies for that. She ended up meeting her boyfriend there at the bookstore, but... I'm not going to tell you the ending. You should check it out. But I do recommend every bicultural or children of immigrants to read this. Also, if you work with a large population of first generation Americans, I think this book is very useful and important. And just to also support Erika L. Sanchez, she's from Chicago. And I know that a lot of my Latino people are going to be able to identify with a lot of the the humor, a lot of the um, phrases, the terms, the slang that is used in this story. And I had not found a book that I could relate to so much in a while. So check this book out and find out what her older sister was keeping secret. I'm gonna jump right into the book discussion. You'll learn a lot from there too, but I definitely, would suggest this book and I would rate it a five out of five. Hey everyone, this is Nettie. I am here with special guests joining me to discuss the book I Am Not Your Mexican Daughter by Erika L. Sanchez. I'm Nettie. I'm Andrea. I'm Erica. I'm uh, Marilyn. Evie. Catalina. Did you find something relatable to you? What did you find relatable to your own self? Erica? I would say just the way she was kind of always questioning her parents and like why they wanted her to be this person. I don't know. They just wanted her to always be like the submissive Mexican woman. And that she's like, no, I don't want to be that way. She just wanted to venture and find herself. So I think growing up, I felt that way too with like, my dad, he was always like this macho man, and mm. women are supposed to be like this way. You're supposed to, you know, yeah. certain things. Like, and I'm like, no. like, no se ve bien if you go out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and all growing up, it was always a fight. Like, 
why do you want to do that? Why do you have to be that way? That's not how we do it. And I'm like, I would remember always telling him, like, well, we're in America now. Like, ya no estamos en tu rancho. <laughs> yeah. So. And then I, you come yeah. from a family of having brothers. You're the only girl. Yes. Right? So I am the only girl. The only woman. So, yeah. So that's hard, too, because growing up, they were, I mean, you always, they were allowed to do all these things, and you're like, no, you can't do that. Why not? My brother can do it. No, you can't do that. Porque so. es hombre. Yeah, porque es hombre y tú no. And I'm like, watch me. Oh, okay. The whole time, watch me. So, so were you kind of like Julia? I'd say I identify with her a lot. Like, just the, I feel like her mom embodies my dad a lot. And in, in some sense, like, the way that he, she just wants her to be this perfect role, or, yeah, perfect person. And her, she's just always, like, contradicting. And I feel like that's, that's how I was growing up. How about you, Marilyn? Um, the part, I think, where she went to Mexico, and it was a little bit of a culture shock for her. I feel like, to me, that stood out the most. Because growing up, like, we went to Mexico every year. And then I think once I reached high school, I made the decision. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to go anymore. Like, you you know, you get behind in school. And there was, I think, a point in my life when I was assimilating maybe too much to the, the American culture and not acknowledging my Mexican side. Like, I stopped speaking Spanish. And my Spanish was just really, really bad. Um, and then finally went back to Mexico after 12 years of not going, which was a very long time, right? So I went with my parents and my sisters, and I just remember, you know, you get older, you're wiser, you look at things from a different perspective, and you hear stories of your parents, mm -hmm. and that's, I think, something that she went through as well, like she found out things about her mom when she was there with her family, she observed how, you know, her family over there lived and how they interacted, um, and that was very much my experience when I went, like I found out so many things about my parents, and it was kind of depressing when I came back because I was like wow like I'm living such a good life and I complain about the smallest things um, and in Mexico they're living a life completely different and so to me that was one of the most relatable things because I'm like I, I get it like it's your culture but it's still a culture shock in a sense yeah Abby well <laughs> um, I think I'm, I can relate to the story because she's an outcast like I, I can't I, I didn't, like I was telling them, I don't have a normal like upbringing. Like I didn't have the typical Mexican parents. Like my parents were like rockers and stuff like that. So I didn't you're really- You're also bicultural, bicultural, right? You're yeah, Mexican and my, my dad's from El Salvador. But like the fact that she's an outcast, I guess like I could relate to that part, mm -hmm. but it wasn't really like, I, I mean, other than like my grandmother and my, they were more like, okay, you can't sleep over anybody's house. You can't, you can't do stuff like that. But as in me, like my mom was like that too. But I think like I wanted to find more of my culture, okay. and my parents didn't really have it. You know, my parents oh. were more Americanized already, and I was like, kind of like, like I said, like my mom was like always like, why the hell are you like so paisita or you know what I mean? Like why why do you I never why showed you, love, you to why do you love why, and, and bring in Yeah, I never showed you to listen to this music. Like where where do you you know Yeah. So Where did you learn this? In France? I don't know. I just like it. Okay. I started with Recodo. That was my what well, started it and then I got into the whole Mexican thing and yeah, I guess my friends because my mom doesn't listen to it. Okay. So Catalina? I think in listening to what people are saying right now, what hit me was um, entitlement, because I think as, well, I'm first generation in the United States, and I'm Mexican Puerto Rican. So growing up, I saw my, we lived in a very Puerto Rican neighborhood in Humble Park, and then we moved when I was in high school to a very white neighborhood. And I saw, like in Humble Park, all, me and my girls were all the same. You know, we got called in at the same time. We had dishes to do. We had things, you know, just because we all had Latina mothers and fathers. But when I got to a white neighborhood, it was like they got to do things that I never got to do or experience things or, you know, like even how they talk to their parents. I was like, oh, if I ever said that to my mom, <laughs> right? And then I'd push it a little bit, like, because then you start hitting a little bit of the rebellion. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I listened to rock. I started listening to other, and it was like, my, I felt like my parents didn't understand me anymore and I didn't understand them. And I think as age, as I got older, there's always been that pride in my culture, but it was like so distant 
because of what I was coming into as being American. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt like that's what she was going through. Like, I don't understand why my parents don't talk to me and I like kicking it with these people, but I don't know how to, how do I put the two together? How do I talk to my mom about having a boyfriend or having my period or whatever, right. opposed to your mother would always be like, you no. can't have those conversations or, <gasps> you know, still, <gasps> right. you know. Right. Even like in the book where Julia decides she wants to have sex with her boyfriend, Connor. Yeah. And how she kept it a secret. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where with my Wait. white friends, everybody was all about, you're still a virgin and you're 18. And I was like, <gasps> my mother would be terrified to hear this conversation between, you know. To this but, day. Yeah, to this day. I'm like, of course, I'm still a virgin. Well, you're not? How did, did you relate to Julia? I feel, I don't know why I feel like. I, I feel like I related to both. So I am the oldest of three girls. Um, are you the goody good? I think I was expected to be the goody good because I was the oldest and I had like these expectations that I was supposed to meet. And so I was supposed to like lead by example and set the example. So that's why I felt like I related to her sister where, you know, I'm supposed to stay home and cook and help and then take care of the girls and then go to school, but then at the same time, it was like, well, I'm not staying here. Like, I'm gonna go out and travel and, you know, find college away. Like, I, I did go to community college, but at the same time, I was given the opportunity to go elsewhere, too. My parents were like, no, you have to stay here. Um, and because I went away to school, then um, it opened doors for my sisters to go away to school. Did you wanna go away to school? Um, not at first. At first, I wanted to stay here just because I didn't know anybody. No, and then afterwards, I'm like, screw this. Like, I'm out. 21, it's time to go somewhere. So yeah. then that's when I went to NIU. And then, I mean, I feel like it did kind of open doors. Like, my sister went to Colorado. Like, I feel like if I never went, she might have never went. So, But I, I related to both because I had these expectations as being the oldest, you know, sister. And then at the same time, I'm like, I can't live under your roof. Mm -hmm. I follow your rules so much. I felt um, how your dad said it. Like, girls can't do that. So yeah. my, my dad straight up said, like, if you were a boy, you would do whatever you want. And I was like, God damn. Well, you'd have, yeah, like, at my house, you'd have. Yeah, They'd like, ask one question, and yeah, go ahead. And then I'd ask the same question, no. Excuse me. Yeah, like, society, um, for Latinas mostly, are put in a box. Even if you watch Latina news, you know, they're all, they all kind of look the same now. Mm -hmm. You know, and the expectations of Latinas... I think we're still a little submissive. We're not all like, woo hoo, we're gonna, you know, girl power but and we're gonna do We're it. still haven't come to the point of brown girl magic. We, we still kinda are submissive to what the stereotype is. And even though we're coming out of that box, you might have like come out from your parents and like, I gotta move out or maybe you had set, you know, whatever. And then, but we're still like, you know, we still look at other girls like, mm better watch yourself because well, that's like yeah because i was going we to still like fit other people in that box at first i was going like waukegan schools and then you know i went to warren was like when i went to warren it was like all oh, white people but when i was like i was going to like a waukegan middle school and i remember the girls used to like hide the fact that they would like like i i i can be vulgar right mm -hmm. like um that they would like go down on a dude or something like that like and at Waukegan, Warren, it was like at Warren, Warren they were like, hey, we love to do this. You know what I mean? Like, it was uh, it was totally different, like, going. I was like, like, I was so, like, dude. You was doing what? And it was, and that's what I said. Like, even, like, you know, they say that this school, Joaquin, is worse than, than Warren. But Warren just had better, more expensive drugs. Mm -hmm. I mean, these kids just were buying, you know what I mean, what they could buy. Mm -hmm. Like, weed and Some these weed. guys had, like peyote and right. coke shit that I never even like knew about you know well, what you I mean? think like, of teen pregnancy and Latinas have babies uh, a lot of abortions. the other neighborhoods have abortions or so, birth control because they're able to right. talk to their parents like okay I'm having sex already yeah. and the mom's like okay let's go and get you some birth control yeah. where Latina it's tabu, the more traditional yeah. it's like nah I mean who knows maybe now the generation because we're all, are we all first generation like I our am. parents yeah. are immigrants yeah. Yeah. No. that's no your parents are well, not immigrants? I mean, my mom came, like, I was saying, my mom came old. over here when she was four. My dad came over when he was 16. Okay, so you're so kind really of, young. like, yeah. second generation. Yeah. Because your mom was kind of raised yeah. over here. You're kind of second generation as yeah, well? Yeah, my mom came when she was four. My dad, I think, he was 18. Okay. Um, so in the story, because you kind of mentioned the going back to Mexico. So the, the story 
touches on a lot of themes, I feel. Um, it touches on mental illness. It touches, obviously, death of the sister. Okay, so, so what happened with Julia was, besides the fact that she was so, she was completely opposite from her sister, but she wouldn't like to go like to family events. She didn't like her parents would go to church. That was kind of their life: work, come home, make the mom would make dinner. No one talks. Go to church. That's what you're supposed to do. She hated going to church. Mm -hmm. She hated going to parties. Wasn't there like a quinceanera or something? She told the tia. She told her up. Yeah, she it was. Her. It was her quinceanera. Oh, it was she her. told her. Oh she yeah. She told her tia up in the bathroom. I can't remember what her. She was bitter because like her the husband said. had like cheated on her, left yeah. her, and the tia was like telling her like, how come you're not the same girl that I knew before yeah. and blah blah. And that's what she. Was. And she's like, how come you can't get over your cheating husband? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Like, you gotta pick on me. Yeah. yeah. So. Julia had a quinceanera, although she did not want one at all. She was so uncomfortable. I felt like there was like a lot of anxiety described, but like her parents weren't treating it like anxiety or some type. But of... you later find out she does suffer from anxiety. Yeah, and she suffers from depression because later on Julia actually attempts to um, suicide. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say commit suicide. To yeah, she attempted. She attempted to kill herself, and that was that surprising for you guys. Was that shocking, that part? No. No? Mm -mm. I feel like when I read it, I didn't expect to read it in that way. Okay. But I don't think, I feel like reading it, you see all that she's not, she's not happy. Mm -hmm. She doesn't feel like she fits in mm -hmm. with her family, with her friends at school. Even with her boyfriend at some point, she feels like it's a burden. She's a burden to him, so... Mm -hmm. I can't say I completely saw it coming, but I can't say I was completely surprised she did it. Is, yeah. Though. I feel like she's a burden. Like I feel like she just carried so much shit. Like I think she was that, just like, angry. Snapped the fuck out of it. Like I don't. I don't know. I, I think so too. She was just, I just like, think too much. You don't really hear about a lot of suicides in Latino families. You know, I don't so think we might. We might not hear about it, but I don't think that that means that it doesn't, doesn't happen. happen. And if you look at statistics, you don't see that. You, you have a very low percentage compared to... But you don't think that that's, not, that's because it's not reported? No. I think they. I think you would have to, in an autopsy, report it. Well, I mean... Well, I is, mean, like, in the sense of, like, attempted. That's like, if someone were to... Different. I mean, right, yeah. Oh, you have to, like, go through. Go but through. This, oh, okay. okay. Like, that comes into the play, like, where I say I feel like she's, like, a brat. Like, she's a fucking brat. And I feel like, okay, maybe that's why she w was, like, kind of crying for attention. Like, mom, pay attention to me. Like, it's not about my sister anymore. Like, mm. here, look at me. Okay. It also stigmatized family, and we're very private. So whether your dad cheated on your mom, you kept it quiet. Yeah. Whether somebody was trying to commit suicide, you kept it quiet. I mean, yeah. that's just Latino families. Um, and also just, like, in real, real cases, uh, people of color are more are less because we uh we can handle resilient. not we're resilient that's resilient. the word mm -hmm. we're more resilient so if you, you look at the so much shit, what else can you do with <laughs> yeah if you look at the side it's uh it's white men who are who are at the top the highest and people of color whether black american or latino or just anything that it's you would say white. minority <laughs> yeah um they're there but not as high as a white man but you know we're more resilient mm -hmm. to things. That this sounds ignorant, <laughs> but like I want to know like. Do I know? Remember when I told you guys to play your phone? I think that's why you see us being bratty. Yeah. Because we have that. You put it on airplane. I would, if I had a kid, if, off, if I had like, yeah, and that's how I was raised. I was yeah. raised with a tough love. Like I've been through some shit, and my mom would be like. She'd be like, you know what? Somebody but, else has it way worse than you. But do. your mom talked to you. I don't think her mom ever talked to her. And that's what her. I'm saying. That's why I can't relate to a lot of these things mm. because and it's like my mom, she wasn't the best person to talk to because she had a lot of issues on her own. But she would tell me when she would see me like going down, like I, I came from kind of like of an abusive household, like father wise, mother wise. And she would like toughen me up. Like when she would see me like coming down and like she'd be like, hey, you know, nobody dies for nobody, and you know, somebody else has it way worse than you, and you're gonna make it through this. And like, I, yeah, I had that tough love. I have a couple points about that, because I also, well, one, I think that's what separates. Because I don't want us to, I want us to remind us that that's the difference between us and someone who has a mental illness. 
we are capable. Yeah. We are able to be like, no, you know what? Like, no, my, yeah, my mama didn't good. come here, you know, mm-hmm. this better life for me. That's the difference between someone who has a mental illness because it is a mental illness. Why don't we talk about I, uh, I think anxiety and depression are a very, like, borderline thing of, like, control. what you get to use. Though, and, and I can get, like, a lot of shit for this, but, uh-huh. like, I do think that it's, like, borderline because you can be like, oh, I suffer from anxiety. Yeah, I've suffered from anxiety uh-huh. plenty of times. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, like... It, can like, you manage it? Yeah. Well, I like to hear how yeah. you guys deal with and how your parents, are you guys able to talk about... Um, depression or feeling kind of that down if you guys even talk to your parents about it what's their reaction I mean have I don't know um I've tried to talk to my mom about anxiety how I guess because I've been I've had anxiety I have anxiety um um so when I try to explain it to her because she doesn't and she still doesn't like she can't comprehend it or empathize with me because she's never felt that way so it does get hard um, you've met my dad. My dad does not talk, so <laughs> he's like the dad in this book. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's no talking to him. Um, but I'm pretty sure, which I found out a couple of years ago, I actually had cousins come in from Washington that I haven't seen in like 10 years. And little did I know that the same anxiety I suffer from, mm-hmm. so do they. So yeah. I wonder if I were to sit down with my dad and actually have this conversation, Yeah. how much we would connect because it's... I feel like it runs through his bloodline because mm-hmm. all the cousins I've talked to, they're the ones who suffer this from the mm-hmm. same thing I do. So I'm like, hmm. I think it's actually... You think your dad suffers from anxiety and that's why he's so quiet. I was be. just going to say that. I because think my dad and I are both cancers. We're a oh my God, day I'm apart. a <laughs> We're a day apart. Our birthdays are a day apart and everyone says I'm exactly like him. Huh. So and they look just alike. Exactly. Like, really. <laughs> so exactly. it could be. I, I wonder that a lot too, but like I said, my dad doesn't talk. Like, I don't... I don't know if it's because he had all girls. I, I mean, what it is. My, we have very so, similar. I'm actually the girls. second out of three girls. There's no boys in my house, um, with the exception of my father, obviously. And I feel like going back to your question, growing up, we did not openly talk about that. We don't talk about emotions. We don't talk about feelings. But I have found that as his daughters, as my parents' daughters are getting older, like I, I, we open those conversations. So it's like we're going to talk about it whether you like it or not because it's common in like not that it's common in our family but like you know I had a friend in high school who attempted suicide so like how do you talk to your child about that we have family members who suffer from depression and it's like how do you talk about that so it wasn't it, it wasn't like the topic to talk about when we were growing up but as we've gotten older and I you have to I think at least for us like we've had to get to that level of being comfortable um because it hasn't always been that way but i do feel pretty comfortable now like if 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 i'm stressing out over work or you know i i've had panic attacks in the past and they've seen me like in a very vulnerable state in the middle of a panic attack like they kind of help me say okay well what let's figure this out like what is going on um and parents stress out too i mean i'm not a parent but having those conversations has also allowed my parents to openly talk about what stresses them out you know and I have those conversations with my dad and you guys have it in my dad but you've been my dad like my dad's the biggest jokester my dad is he talks a lot and him and I are very similar in a lot of ways as well um and I think me and my sisters asking them these uncomfortable questions has allowed him and it has allowed my mom to be like okay well we can talk about this like it's it's not taboo and even though it is like we we can openly have this dialogue with our kids but I I feel like it's kind of rare because it's not very common and had we not had these life experiences or you know had I not asked my dad specific questions about life like we we probably would not get there so I think it takes a while Mm -hmm. to build that relationship because it it's Yeah, you have to. And there's still a lot of things that my parents say sometimes. And I'm like, well, that's, you know, that like... That's racist. We can't, we can't <laughs> say that. We can't say that. Not because I hear, you know, like your parents all the like, time. I'm, I'm like getting like flashbacks of like my mom when my little sister was very like sentimental. She'd want to cry sometimes. And my mom would be like, it's okay to cry. Go ahead and cry, you know, uh-huh. and then you'll be fine. Like she was, I, I, I it's coming See, back. See, I feel like, like in my put, household it was the opposite. See, like, it, suck it up, don't, yeah. no, don't with cry. No, me it was suck it up, but oh, I feel so like, I, oh, okay, I feel okay. like, I think, and my sister I just called me because so. my, my, um, my little brother just came out the other day, 
and um, she took Yay. my come out really, I didn't come out, I got found out. <laughs> but, um, she took it really bad. And then my little brother came out and my mom was like, and you know what, we're gonna go wow. through this together. So she learned, so my, my sister was like, do you feel like Jesus? Like you sacrificed everything for <laughs> us. Oh, like, like she was like telling me all this stuff, but it, it is crazy. Cause I was the one that was like, suck it up, suck it up. You know, my mom always suck it up, dude, suck it up, get up. When I was sick, parate, parate, cabrona, parate. You know, like, yeah. like, you know, yeah. it was just shit like, yeah. I don't want you to feel sick, bro. Like, If you felt like that, did you feel like that was good for you? Like for parents to say, I mean, my mother was the same way, like, if I cry, she'd be like, yeah, 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 or, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you want know, a like, reason to cry? Yeah, that was yeah, more common. Yeah. Yeah. But in a I different feel like sense, it, not when you cried because you wanted your way, but when you cried because something was hurting. Yeah. If they told you that, how did you feel about that? Or how did that make you who you are today? I feel like we've transi- transitioned out of that in my house, though. My mom suffered, or is living with depression. She's, she's better now, but um, she went through a really ugly stage in, in her life. And so before it was very much so you don't talk about it. You just, you, you're having a bad day. You suck it up. You bottle it up. You don't talk about it. And then seeing her go through it and then us not knowing how to deal with it. I feel like once now that she is better, we do talk like if you are upset, you do talk about it now. You've seen the negative consequences of sucking it up. Yes, because she bottled up. They went through, both of my parents lost their job at the same time they worked for the same company. The company was moving out of the country. My grandpa had, my dad's dad had just passed away, which was like her dad. And then her dad got diagnosed with cancer. So it was just like financial stress, emotional, like everything just kind of, yeah. And then so, I mean, she'd be really sad and we'd, like, what's wrong? She wouldn't be able to tell you what was wrong. She did, she herself didn't know. And then it would become like, we'd be frustrated. Like, what do you mean? Well, why, why can't you just be happy? Mm. Because I, because, and then I felt guilty at some point because I, I did feel like I was just like, why can't you just, like, why can't you just be happy? Why can't you just, why can't you suck it up? Like, oh. you're fine. Like, you're, the bills are still getting wow. paid. Yeah. Like, yeah, because I was like, the bills are still getting paid. Your kids, you know, are still clothed. There's still food on the, our table. Yes, we're going through a hard time, but shit's getting done so why are you sad why are you upset and then I felt like I was angry that she was going through this that she felt depressed so then she actually um she went to Mexico to visit her dad and we decided to not buy her plane ticket back until she got help out there yes okay so she did um my dad and her family, <laughs> my dad and her, well, her sisters, like her, my grandma, so they everyone were over saw there. It. Yes. Everyone well, okay. I don't think it was talked about until she was over there and they would talk to my dad, like my mom's sisters would call my dad and be like, what's wrong with, because my mom's, if you meet my mom, she's really happy. She's really outgoing. She's funny. She makes inappropriate jokes. All that, like, she's just funny. She's always happy. Está arreglada all the time. Like. And she just wasn't. She, she would shower kind of because she had to, not because she wanted to. Yeah. She would no longer do her. She never really wore makeup, but like she wouldn't do her hair like that, or she'd be in frumpy, frumpy clothes, and that's just not her. Yeah. So then they would see that, and they're like, "What's wrong with her?" My mom's name is also Erica. What's wrong with Erica? Like, what what's wrong with her? And, um, he was just like, I, you know, she's, I don't know, like she's been like this for a long time, and we saw it, and then. So we would deal with like her being sad or maybe not her not knowing how to deal with her sadness. So then she'd be angry and say hurtful things as well. Um, so then they were like, well, we're going to have her go see a doctor here. And the doctor had her go through. She went to like therapies. Um, and I think she had medication. She didn't tell us this either. We, I found this out not too long ago. And this was, I don't know, five years ago. I was still in, I was fresh out of high school, I think, so. Um, but I didn't know that she had to take medication up until recently. She was like, oh, well, you know, the med, and I'm like, you take meds? Yeah. Not not in a judging way, but just in a, like, I had no idea. Yeah, I think um, that, um, you know, just hearing what you're saying, um, I think we label things, right, with depression, and it just might be a part of life. I mean, I remember going to the doctor and, and being sad and telling him, like, I was going through a lot, and they gave me depression pills right away. 
And I remember I picked them up at Walgreens and I got home and I'm like, the fuck is this? Are you really gonna take these? Like, you can't handle it? You can't handle life? Yeah, like, I, I guess that's your, your, your my psyche, right? Yeah, like, and your mentality that raised you? Like, yeah. oh, you can't. But I think that just goes to show you that everybody goes through something. Right. Mm -hmm. So to label it completely, like, I think there's severe cases and I think there's times where look, life just ain't happy for a good three to six months. You just you gotta deal with whatever you gotta deal with. That made me think about a little bit about Julia's parents too, how just um, if we look at from the outside in, it's just kind of like, man, like, that sucks. You know, they're very, like, your traditional rancho people. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but once you, once Julia goes to the, back to the town and the sisters, and the sisters and the family members paint them as total different people. And that, and kind of like your mom's story made me think about our parents of like how, how much things they kept to themselves. Like being new to a new country, or maybe in your case, grandma, my case, grandma, um, as well I always think about my grandma like how did she come here with not knowing the language with five of her children and and she, my grandma is like she has made it yeah and what it's like your typical my grandma's a typical Catholic grandma like um she does do the eggs for the babies like if they're crying too much like oh una limpia cause alguien le hizo ojo mm -hmm. um or my grandma is like I understand the whole faith because that has helped her so much like that is what kind of uh, gives her hope I guess mm -hmm. um, so I, yeah that's her medication just say, like religion is not a bad thing when they use it in that sense like faith like something to keep going but when you use religion to like hate a certain people, people or people. like yeah. that's when I'm like, well, you hate people. But, like when you when you use we, it to hate the gays yeah then you're wrong. No, with yeah. anybody I mean like but like when you use religion to like yeah, to yeah. spread so hate. To keep you going the to next judge. day. Mm -hmm. God loves me. Better. If that's what keeps you going another fucking day, do it, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, do it. But don't sit there and tell me my living is Wrong. mind your business. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, <laughs> like, mind your business. Right, right. Like, do your fucking thing, dude. Yeah. Um, and I guess what I was going with the parents is how sometimes we have to remember that our parents are human. And I think that's what painted Julia's parents. We find out something very tragic which was when they were crossing the border, the mother was raped and the husband like, witnessed the rape. And before this, he was a painter and he was happy after this happened and they come to this new country to, for a better living. That's where I kind of want to get into how you come for a better living, but is it a better living if he just pretty much went into a routine and he obviously they were in like in a depression he's just mm -hmm. existing at this yeah point. he's not really he's not living yeah. i think that's part of the sacrifice that they make and and as a parent they know that like hey we have to give up our family we have to give up our fun like he was a painter he loved to do that we have to give up xyz because to them they're putting their family first so i think to him even though he was he was described as like emotionless i feel like he was like you know what my oldest daughter graduated from high school she went to college she's still you know here living at home she's living a good catholic mexican way you know he, i and i'm making assumptions i'm not the dad but i feel like they looked at it as like okay our, our daughters are here they we have food we have a, a home you know a shitty house i think it was described as a shitty house with roaches, with roaches. Yeah. but i think to them like they weren't living their fun life anymore, but that was a sacrifice they were making. They were like, yeah. we would rather do that because if we lived in Mexico, it would be very different. But look, at, it's funny that you say that because even what you just said, Erica, right? Yes. Was your mom went back to Mexico and you guys wouldn't let her come back until she was. Mm -hmm. Look how many of us, and I was telling you stories about, and how they sent Julia back, but even in my generation of girls being sent back home, or even boys, to to grasp what Mexico had to offer. Like, America didn't have that. There's a reason why they sent your mother back to get right with her family in Mexico. There's I think a reason why those girls in my neighborhood had to go mm -hmm. back. There's a reason why they feel that tradition, whatever it is, yeah. Mexico has that power that they America doesn't. Here. I think for us it was just financially wise because my parents were out of work and her depression had gotten so bad it was just easier for her to get help there especially because oh, her, fami her family her mm. family saw 
what it like it wasn't no it was no longer just in our head that there was something wrong with my mom like we hadn't discussed this with our family in Mexico and they called my dad and asked him what was wrong with her and that's when he was like I feel like he was forced to kind of face the music because he's this very macho man depression doesn't run you know like de no depression isn't a thing or mental yeah. illness isn't a thing yeah. and that you talk about and so he was forced to kind of be like yeah there's something wrong with my wife and she does need help, and so when they did seek help, that the recommendation was for her to continue on with treatment there. So, but funny that she went to Mexico. Yeah, just like yeah. any adolescent would go. You got pregnant, or you became a rebel. I wonder yeah, if we still people. do that, like in the now, because I, I feel like that was like more in the little older generation, or like even our generation still still got sent yeah. off. Yeah, so yeah. I, feel we're like, I feel like yeah. we're in the mixture I knew. where we still where we still get like the older side and the younger side but i feel like after this generation it's going to be just like the younger it. side yeah it's going to be like know that there's like, we're yeah. more to the second and third generation of latinos that's why yeah. we're taking over the country right we that's are so. in the mid 20s 30s 50s in this in this uh Who's 50? Discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so um how about we finish with this question why do you think books like this uh are important in today's world to show what people go through. But it's like the real, well, I feel like the, the realer you are, a lot of people won't say things that are really going on in your household, that are really happening because it's like, oh, especially now with like social media, how like, oh, that bitch is crazy. Oh, that, you know what I mean? Like they'll sit there and judge you. But I feel like right now, like you can't be real. You have to show that you live a cookie cutter life to be good, to be successful on Instagram, you know what I mean? Talk. And right now, it's so it's so out there. If you if you sit there and have a drunk night and you fall over your ass, everybody knows about it the next day. Mm. Nobody knew about it back in the day. No, they didn't. Thank God there's no Snapchat in my in my school days. No, but what I'm saying is like, and so now I feel like it's so so these books where it's kind of showing like, you know, she she was so like real with her like suicide or like her attempt of suicide her how she was like saying I, I kind of like the way that she was like my sister's dead like my sister's dead my sister didn't pass away my sister's dead I like how real she was with that um I just feel like it's important for if we read anything if we hear anything that's really real that makes people feel uncomfortable that you couldn't say out loud I think that's so important because right now we have to live a certain life because of social media. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's like, uh, My favorite no, that's thing good. Thank was you. just how, I, I thought obviously the storyline was, you know, it was a little tough. Oh yeah, but tell me about the storyline because you really didn't like the storyline, but you like that you could relate, like yeah. understand the language. So I feel like the actual storyline could be, could have, and I love the book, I'm not bashing it, but... I feel like the storyline could have been told by almost anyone, whether you are a, a white writer, a male. Like, to me, I felt like the storyline was, meh, that it was okay. And then I just hated the ending. I was like, all right, you're just going to go off to college, and yeah, that's sure, it. Like, yeah. I didn't really care for it. But I do appreciate the, uh, just how relatable it was culturally. And then, like, just the slang, like, los apodos de los tíos, and, like, when she Wait, went what? back to me. Yeah, Wait, like, yeah. like uh, the cockroaches. I loved, like, there were so many things about it that I'm like, that's my culture. Like, you cannot, you can you can be of a different race, and there are things in here that you may not get. And I, I kind of, like, like that. I was like, haha, you kind of have to be, like, Latina, or you yeah. have to be Mexican to, you know, kind of really understand some of these jokes. Like, yeah. that to me I love because I have not... And I, I don't, I'm not an avid book reader. Like, I know you read books all the time. I'm not an avid book reader, but I'm like, this is the first book that I have found that I'm like, yes, like, I can relate to them in this way, in this way, and in that way. Um, but for the storyline, I thought it was, I thought it was good. I just, I would not have picked it up if it, if it didn't have, I'm not your perfect Mexican daughter. Like, if it didn't have the word Mexican, if it. If you would have just read what the story is about, you would have been like, eh. No. Yeah, I probably would have brushed it off. Okay, thank you. Erica? I think for me, the same, like, the fact that it was so relatable and she had so many, the fact that she had so many issues with her own culture. Okay. Because I feel like I myself have, find myself questioning a lot of my, mm -hmm. my cultural beliefs or just the way that, that yeah. things are in my household. So I think just that, the fact that she was just so wrong, she stuck to her guns and was like, well, I don't, I can't identify mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. or be who you want me to be. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. Type yeah. thing. So I think that just the same relatable. Andrea, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> Why is a book like this important in today's world? Okay. So going off what you had said about being able to relate or when, when you were reading things and you're like, oh, yeah, I can relate to that. Um, that was one of the main reasons I picked it up, too, because I was like, oh, my, what is a perfect Mexican daughter and how am I not one? Like, <laughs> let me compare and contrast, right? Um, so that was, that's how, that, and that's what, you know, got me into this book. Um, because then I, after this book, I read Gabriel Union's book. Okay. And a lot of her oh. jokes... A lot of, I couldn't understand. And I was Uh, like, oh, duh, because, you know, that's not my culture. Like, I'm not from there. Like, I get that. And then. Where was she born? (laughs) She's black. Uh, She was, I think it was like Omaha. Omaha. I'm not quite sure. Um, But no, just how she spoke about her family. Like, obviously, I couldn't relate to it. So then I kept going back to this book where I'm like, duh, like, I can relate to some of the stuff they're saying or some of, like, those jokes or, you know, her family background. Um, So what was the question? Why do you think this book is important in today's world? Oh, that's why I think this book is important in in today's world. And I also, I brought this book up to one of my administrators at school. And after I explained it to him and how I could relate to him, and he's like, well, look at where you work. I'm like, you know, I work on the south side of Waukegan. We have a huge Hispanic population. He's like, maybe now it's time for you to share your story. And I'm like, whoa. Like, maybe <laughs> one day. <laughs> maybe one day. But I'm like, yeah, I'm like, we need more of these books. I'm like, when I'm 30 and this is the first time either I found a book like this or that there is a book like this yeah. that I can relate to. I think it's very Have relevant. I think <laughs> there, it's, it was needed because it needs to be about us That's what it, it, well, the story of Latinas whether it's different whether you found something that was different about it or you found something that was very alike or you found something that nobody else would know in the click because it says well, well, or whatever the case may be it's about us it's about Latinos and that's what we need mm-hmm. and working in education there's not enough cultural books like this that have children relate to who they are it builds self-confidence so more books like this are needed, and I'm glad that it was written for younger kids and we were able to relate because why? There's not a lot of books that were out there for us to be like, I can connect even if it's 25%. It's about I'm, I'm, rel- I, I'm relevant in this world. I'm somebody. Yeah. I can make that connection, and that's – she killed Like it. we are – there's so many of us with different stories where our parents are the first generation. So I really feel – that first, uh, what is it, first generation in coming here, first generation college students, we go through this world code switching, language switching. We're su- we're, I really do feel that we are a lot smarter with just being exposed to so many things. You know, when you're in corporate, like, oh, knowing what language to talk. And then, but, you know, I could... But also knowing what ratchet means, what <laughs> <laughs> lit go straight, mm-hmm. what your corporate mm-hmm. real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you mean um, as like Hispanic people? I think just in general, just our just our experience as humans, mm-hmm. um, bicultural people, bicultural, and not only just Mexican, bicultural people, just have. I mean, you have exposure to two different worlds. And we're still very, like, I could still, my grandma's very traditional, and I'm not like, I, like why does she think like that? It's just like, okay, you know, she's you old like, school. You always have catered it. You yeah, like, she's yeah. old school. I'm not going to sit here and argue about the Catholic mm-hmm. Church with her, mm-hmm. where if someone she my age, it. I'd be like, uh, let me show you guys yeah. a couple books. Let me show you guys yeah. a couple of movies. You know, you know that they protect sexual abuse. Like, you know, they don't get charged. <laughs> it's not um, going there right now. Throw it in the dig yeah. at the, on the religion there, girl. You know, Watch it. But, um, <laughs> my bad. I like that too. I'm like, yeah, I relate to Julia so much because I kind of feel, I kind of felt like, I was like, oh my God, yes, I get it. Because I, there was a point in my life where I didn't feel like I fit in. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand, like, no, I don't care about what's going on. Like, have you read this book? Or like, oh, I'm, I don't know. I just didn't, I've kind of always felt like I don't really fit into a certain like group but are you I've always okay been, are you okay with that okay because i've felt like that many times like where well, you don't fit in but you're all right that you don't fit in well like, now like, as a 30 year old i am right. super see and confident. i've always felt that like confidence like where i don't there's dude like yeah 
I used to get bullied and shit, like, for a while. For, no, no, I never I never got bullied, but I'm just saying, like, I never... I always had, like, best friends, um, but I never really... Fi- what I mean with I never really fit into one certain type was, like, mm-hmm. I mean, I could... In high school, I listened to The Used. Do you guys know who The Used is? Mm-hmm. You guys know who The Used is? Oh, yeah, you're, you... Yeah, The Used, but then I could also go to a freaking baile and dance my ass off to, like, duelo, to banda, to... Um, I could go to um, Wale. I like Wale. You said banda, like, to me. I don't banda. I, I listen to everything, though. I dance salsa dancing. Like, my salsa dancing in Chicago, it's like a whole subgroup that I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I, I have so many different um, well, identities that I fit in. You, you can fit into all those because of the That's opportunities is, we yeah. have. But, you know, I was thinking when you were saying that, like, if you look at all the mass shooters in uh, high schools are white, right? Mm-hmm. And we don't have that, right? We don't, we don't really have that in our community. Mm-hmm. We feel as an outsider, just like they feel as an outsider, but I think we have the strength of our culture to kind of maintain yeah. our stability and our normalness of like, we might feel a little weird sometimes, like, oh. Yeah. Like, so what if somebody doesn't fucking like you? Like, we like suck it up, like, all right, we'll right. keep going. Yeah. Like, my, my, like them, my tia like, doesn't like me, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I don't like her. <laughs> it's like versus them. It's like they get all like, nobody likes me. I'm gonna fucking kill everybody. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't know. What um, yeah, I think just going back to the book, I think I want every. It's good not just for Latino people or people who are mm-hmm. born in two different cultures. It's good for everybody so that the outsiders that don't fit in like know how it feels to not understand certain things because that's like how we grow up. Teachers who work in Joaquin or, or Spanish anywhere that, that yeah. just have or Hispanic kids that don't Latinos yeah. might not understand why they are the way they are. I feel like if they were to read this, they could possibly understand better. Understand so, why. any teachers out there listening, read I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter. I I'll every push it. yeah, um, any first generation sure. immigrant will really identify with this, whether you are Mexican or from other Salvador, Puerto Rico. It's a good story, period. Guatemala. Yeah, like parents could also. It's like it. the catcher yes. and the rye. I actually, I actually, I actually made my mom read Is there a yeah, Spanish version of it? I, not, I mean, I, I want one. Because yeah. I, I feel like my mom, my parents yeah. would I bought identify. it, and I was, I passed it on. I, was, I, was, I in the group message, my sisters and my mom, especially like my mom, I'm like, yeah. so you guys. Hey, Did mom, your mom read it? Uh, she started it. Okay, my mom read it. She's 74. Loved it. I love the conversation I had with my mother. I had it after I met with the book club, and she read it. And I mean, it was just a deep conversation. Yeah. Is your mom the Mexican side? Mexican. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to thank all of you guys. All right. I appreciate you guys, and thank you guys for being so honest. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, Erica, Marilyn, Kat, and Andrea. Yeah. Thank you guys for being honest about all your feelings. You guys all matter.